Is the Lord God Almighty. Make his strength. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness my loving greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ my name is David Turner and I want to welcome you to this week's program the gospel is the power amen this week God has placed upon my heart a message entitled, My God Will Bless You. Amen? My God, Jesus Christ, will bless you. The key verse is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 67, verse 6. It says, My God will bless me, and the field will yield its fruit. Amen? So who is our God. Book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. God says, I am he who I am. My name is for the covenant. My name is to be remembered from generation to generation. Hallelujah. So God's name is to be remembered and recorded from generation to generation. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 24, it says, where my name is remembered, where my name is recorded, God says, I will come to you and I will bless you. Precious child of God, you need not go searching all over for God. Simply remember his name, record his name in your life, and he will come to you and he will bless you. Hallelujah. Who is our God who says, I am he who I am? Book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32. The Bible says, know your God that you might do the great exploits. So you see, when we take the time to know our God, in knowing him, your life will increase. You will increase in wisdom, in power, in authority, in the anointing over your life all because you know your God so that you can do the great exploits for his kingdom and for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Who is our God? Book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19 and 20. The Bible says that our God cannot lie. There is no lie in him. Amen. Jesus Christ speaking to the Father is saying in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 23, the greatest blessing that they can have is to know you and to know me. That's the greatest blessing that we can have, is to know God the Father and God Jesus Christ. Amen? We also, book of John, chapter 14, verse 17, it's also our blessing we must know God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So our God he cannot lie. Let us look at the relationship that God had with Moses. Amen? We see that God looked unto Moses and he spoke to him face to face as a friend. We see this in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 3, and also verse 7. And the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 11, and verse 14. God, 
who said, I am he who I am. He never lied. He spoke so many promises to Moses and fulfilled them. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says that God's promises are yes and amen. Book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, it says that from the time of Moses until now, every promise that God made never failed. He never lies. He never fails. Amen? We see how God led Moses in every area of his life. Precious child of God, same way God led Moses, he wants to lead your life. He never lies. His promises for you, they are yes and amen. They will never fail. So just like in the Bible, we also must think to ourselves, my God, who cannot lie, will bless me. Amen? In fact, say that right now with me. Just think in your heart. Say out loud, child of God, believe it. My God who cannot lie, will bless me. Amen? This is the way we must be thinking in our hearts. Hallelujah. My God, who cannot lie, will bless me. Amen. We see in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 4, how God calls Moses over to the burning bush. And he says, take off your sandals, for you are on holy ground. So Moses draws near to the bush and he says, Lord, who are you, Lord? And God says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses was frightened. He was afraid. He hid his face. We see in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 7, God says to Moses, I have called you to deliver my people, the Israelites. Amen. He said three things here. He said, I've called you to deliver them for I have seen their oppression and their affliction. Amen. God has seen their oppression and affliction. Book of Isaiah 63 verse 9. In all of your affliction, God sees it and he's also afflicted. Book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 13. He is El Roy. He is the God who sees. Precious child of God, no matter what the affliction you're going through, God is seeing it right now. Psalm 11, verse 4, from his throne in heaven, he sees your affliction. Amen? And he's afflicted through the same things that are afflicting you. The second thing that God said to Moses, he said, I hear their cry. Precious child of God, Nobody can cry out to your God like you can cry for yourself. I always say, faith might move the mountains, but your tears, your cry, moves the heart of the maker of heaven and earth. God said, Isaiah 58, verse 9, call upon my name, God said, and I will say, lo, I am here. He said in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call upon Jesus in your times of trouble. He'll show you great and unchurchable or mighty things. Book of Psalms 50, verse 15, he says, call upon the name of the Lord. Call on Jesus, and in your times of trouble, he will deliver you. He hears your cry, child of God. The third thing God said is, he said, I know their sorrows and their lamentation. Child of God, God knows your sorrows. He became, Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, a man of sorrows that he might take away your sorrow. He knows your tears. Jesus came, Isaiah 25, verse 8, to wipe away the tears from the face of his people. He knows all of your lamentation, all of your sorrows. Three things God said to Moses. He said, I see their affliction. I hear their cry. I know their lamentation and sorrow. Precious child of God, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. He knows, he sees your affliction. He knows your lamentation and sorrow. He hears your cry. Amen. Be encouraged in this today. My God will bless you in your circumstances. Amen. In fact, my God who cannot lie will come through with the blessing in your life. God, who cannot lie, will never forsake you, child of God. 
Book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. God said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Maybe right now in your life, maybe you are undergoing the tremendous difficulties. Maybe you're crying because of all the affliction. Maybe you're suffering in so much pain because of sickness. You have sorrow and lamentations because of the problems in your life. But I encourage you today, child of God, I have the good news. Put your trust in your God, Jesus Christ, who cannot lie. Hallelujah. Book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 8. God said two things. He said to Moses, I have come down to deliver and to set free my people, and I've come to lead them to the land of milk and honey. Precious child of God, two things God wants to do in your life. First, he wants to deliver you, and he wants to set you free. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Book of John chapter 8, verse 36, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13, in all the places, it says God wants to deliver you. Precious child of God, he will deliver you. He will set you free by the Spirit of the Lord. Not only he wants to deliver you and set you free, but he wants to lead you in your life. God wants to lead you by the Holy Spirit. But in order to be led by the Holy Spirit, you must be willing to surrender your life before God. Amen? Hallelujah. We see in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 12, God says to Moses, Surely I will be with you. I will be with you, and when I'm with you, the people shall be delivered, that they might come out and of their oppression and worship me at Mount Horeb. Precious child of God, Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16, Psalm 27, verse 10, both the places it says, again, God will not leave you or forsake you. His name is Emmanuel, book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is with you. He will not leave you. He wants to be with you. He wants to deliver you and lead you so that you will come out of your oppression, come out of all that is against you so that you might come and worship him. Psalm 95, verse 6 and 7. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, before our God, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. Precious people of God, God wants to deliver you. It is his desire to bless you. My God will bless you because he wants you to come out of the oppression, come out of the difficulties, and come and worship and glorify his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 22, God says to Moses that the, the Israelites should ask the Egyptians for, ask them for their gold and for their silver. Whatever they ask for when they come out, when he delivers them, they will come out and plunder the Egyptians and take all the treasures that they might not have to walk to the promised land empty-handed. Precious child of God, my God, your God, Jesus Christ, wants to bless you with all the blessings. Ezekiel 34, 26. We must understand this point. This is a tremendous key I've found in my life. Psalm 73, verse 25, it says, Whom do I have in heaven but you, O God? Book of John, I always quote this, one of my favorite verses, John 3, 27. Unless it comes from heaven... We get nothing. Precious child of God, this is a tremendous understanding for your life. The moment we understand we have nobody on this earth, nobody in heaven apart from God Almighty Jesus Christ. But he is your advocate. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 31, if God is for you, who can be against you? All you need is God Almighty in your life. Stop trying to acquire the consolation of the world, the promise of the world. Your God in heaven will bless you. His name is Jesus Christ. He wants to bless you with all the blessings blessing. Unless it comes from him, we get nothing. I've found the peace in my life because I understand. I don't try to do anything unless it's the will of God. I used to think, I trusted that God would fulfill his will in my life. I just never trusted that his will would line up with what I wanted in my life. 
The moment I came to understand that that was silliness, that God designed me, he formed and fashioned me, he knew what would complete me and what would fulfill the work he sent me to do from heaven. The moment I surrender to his will and I allow his will to be done in my life, automatically he loves us and he wants his will fulfilled. The moment his will is fulfilled in your life, you will find all the peace and all the satisfaction, you will be complete. You see, I learned from that point, if God has something for me, I want it. Not more and not less. I don't want to do less or accomplish less, but I'm not trying to accomplish more. I don't have any of my own agenda. It's simply God, whatever you have for me, then you have peace. If you're looking for a house, if you want to be married and and you're looking for a spouse, if you're in your own will, your own desire, you're always panicking. Anxiety is the difference between God's plan and your expectations. But the moment you say, God, I know if you have it for me, if it comes from heaven, nobody can step in the way. No one can take it. The guy can't say, hurry up and put in your bid because someone else is going to buy it. You'll say, God bless him. If God has it for me, nobody can step in the way. And if God doesn't have it for me, I don't want it anyway. Child of God, the moment we understand this point, who do we have in heaven but God? Unless it comes from heaven, we get nothing. The moment you start to think like this, you will be saying like Paul, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Jesus Christ. It's not I who lives, but Jesus Christ who lives in me. Let him fulfill his plan, his purpose, his desire. Bring all the things he wants in my life. Nothing more, nothing less. At that point, the moment we surrender like this, then God will fulfill it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We see in the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 1, Moses says to God, he says, but what if the people don't believe me? What if they don't believe I've had an encounter and I've seen you, Lord? To this, God responded, Exodus chapter 4, verse 2 to 9. He says, what do you have in your hand? Take it and throw it down, the rod. The moment Moses threw it down, it turned into a serpent. He was immediately afraid. He was afraid because child of God, the enemy, the serpent, the devil, had been haunting him for 40 years because he had had to wander in the desert because he killed a man. So 
what happened is Moses is seeing Jesus in the Old Testament through the burning bush. He's had an encounter with Jesus, but yet he's still fearful because he's dealing with the enemy who's reminding him of 40 years of his past sin. But to this, God answers Moses, and he knows Moses' heart, and he says, Moses, pick up the serpent by the tail. Why did he say, pick up the serpent by the tail? Because God, Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, and even from the foundations of the world, had already crushed the head of the enemy. So he said, pick it up by the tail. Because God has already said, book of Romans chapter 16, verse 20, I've given you, meaning all of us, all authority to trample the enemy beneath our feet. Precious child of God, you may have had the experience of Jesus Christ, and yet you're still living in fear because the devil is running you for, for many years of your life, causing you to dwell on your past failures and your past sin in your life. But God is speaking to you today, and he's saying, pick up the serpent by the tail. Stop paying attention to the enemy and Pick up that serpent. Jesus Christ, by his death and resurrection, has already crushed the enemy for you. Stop walking in the darkness, walking in the shame of the sin, and come out and pick the enemy up and take the authority in the name of Jesus Christ by the tail. No more are you a sinner, but you are righteous, and God is ready to bless you. Move forward into the blessing that my God has for you. Amen? Hallelujah. So many of us, God has such a calling, such a blessing on your life, but you're so busy being fearful because you've been run by the past. Not believing the word of God, but hearing the voice of the enemy in your head. I say, pick up the serpent by the tail. Crush the enemy beneath your feet. Move forward into the promise of God. For your God never lies. His promises are yes and amen upon your life. Fulfill your destiny in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next, God says to Moses, he said, put your hand in your bosom. He takes it out, and he's so fearful, his arm has leprosy all over it. Then God says, put it back in your bosom. He takes it out again, and it's completely clean. What does this mean, child of God? In the Old Testament, we see in the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verse 45, we see how the leprosy people they had to run around saying, unclean, unclean, and declare how unclean they were before all the people. What a shame in their lives. But God, Jesus Christ, has removed your shame. Every area of your life where you've been unclean, when he pulled it back out, his arm was like snow. Once again, it was cleansed from the leprosy. Precious child of God, it is a very description of our relationship with God Almighty, how you were filled with the leprosy, the shame, you were unclean. But Jesus Christ, by his birth, death, and resurrection, has made you clean. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, though your sins were as scarlet, you were filled with the leprosy. He's made you white as snow. Book of Isaiah 43, verse 25, he remembers your sin no more. Same way as if your arm came out from the leprosy, clean. There's no remnant of the, of the leprosy in your life because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everything of your past has been wiped clean. The slate is clean in your life. Psalm 103, verse 11 and 12, it says that God has removed your sin as far as the east is to the west. You know, so many people, they call me and say, I've repented, I've cried for forgiveness, but I don't believe God has heard me. That's a lie from the devil, child of God. Our God who cannot lie has said that because of the death of Jesus, not your works, your works are like filthy rags, not your righteousness, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.21, we are made righteous, we are clean from our sins of the past. The devil haunted Moses for 40 years. He may be haunting you because of your sin and holding you back from the blessing that God wants you to enter into into your life and the promises of God. But God says, I have removed removed all the blight upon you, upon your name, all the leprosy from your life, all the sin and the curses from the past is faith in Jesus Christ. Your sins are removed. No more. Take that serpent by the tail. Rise up, child of God. 
Hallelujah. Let's pray together right now, child of God. Close your eyes. Open your heart. Look unto the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is the power. Remember always 1 Corinthians 1.18. It says that the cross is foolishness to the perishing people, but for those of us being saved, it's the very power of God. Lord Jesus Christ, right now, every person that is humbling their hearts, closing their eyes and coming before you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, hear their cry right now. Hear their cry for you, sovereign God. Become real in their lives. You are so real, so tangible, oh God, but let them realize it in their lives today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. Come upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, the living water flow in their lives right now. God, tangibly let them feel feel right now your presence in that place. The anointing power of the Holy Spirit, the fire anointing of God, flow right now in their lives in the name of Jesus. Oh God, all the transformation come in their heart. Open the spiritual inward eye of their hearts right now. God, draw them, for John 6, unto you by your Holy Spirit. Open their eyes. Let them know you in a new way. God, let them see. Oh God, I cry today, Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, taste and see the Lord is is good. God, let them taste. Let them see your goodness. God, the way you've shown it to me. God, I am not special. God, I am so zealous for you because I've seen how real, how true you are, how faithful that you never lie, that your words are yes and amen. God, it's not me. It is you who has inspired me. God, inspire your people. Let them rise up like a holy army, oh God. Let them come even unto the mountain. Let them come to the mountain of God that they might worship you, worship you and fall at your feet, Lord Jesus Christ, that you might be high, lifted up and glorified once again in this land and in this nation, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, be exalted and bless your people this week. You said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Lord Jesus Christ, draw all your people this week unto you. God, in the name of Jesus, all the people, let their eyes, their ears, their hearts, their spirit be fixed upon you this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Precious people of God, join us next week for the second part of our message, My God Will Bless You. Amen. Big is Make straight his path in the wilderness. Let his light shine. Let his light shine.